Welcome back. I'm with the MEC for Education in the Free State, Mr. Tate Marquay, who is with me here. We're discussing the work of his department. I'm going back first to the Tate story. Yes. Is, is there something you can tell me about John <laughs> Tate that made somebody decide somewhere that? No. Nah, I let's call him Tate. Yeah, no, no, no. I think it was uh, at uh, Pierre Lang in, 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 in Paris. Yeah. And then I think that, uh, you know, um, it was during John, Big John Tate when he came here. And then, because I liked boxing. Yes. Um, uh, you know, there, there used to be power punch boxing in Paris. And then uh, one chap at school started saying, you look like that's John Tate that you're talking about. Yes. And, yeah, yeah. and the name stuck. I okay. Didn't, I didn't want the name to stick, but it stuck. There, there the it is. No, I thought life. it might be a bit more dramatic <laughs> no, than no, that, no. that you knocked somebody out. Because I'm just about to ask about yes. discipline at yeah. school. <laughs> so who knows? You might, you no. might have been involved no, in no, fights no, in school, really. and that's how they not called really, you that. Yeah. But what's your view of what we are seeing now? It could be the effect of social media. The fact that videos go viral and we see yeah. them and uh, it gives a sense that mm -hmm. there's so much violence in schools, there's no discipline whatsoever and mm -hmm. uh, many mm -hmm. parents and citizens generally concerned about the state mm -hmm. of affairs mm -hmm. in schools. Mm -hmm. what, what's your sense of mm -hmm. discipline in schools? No, but Tim, I think I it is a concern. Uh, it's a serious matter um, because you see, once uh, you find a situation where uh, children actually undermine teachers to an extent of fighting them and creating violence in the school. It actually reflects the society in which we are living. It reflects that uh, we are a very violent society and therefore it, it actually demands that the nucleus of the society, which is the family, must really try and stand up and do something about it. Uh, you know, this brings me back to your earlier question. At one point, yes, I did fight at the school. And then I fought a teacher, right? You know, when you arrive at high school, uh, you think that you know you get a lot of influences mm. and so on, and I fought a teacher. And then the, the te other teachers hit me, you know, physically. And I went down home uh, to go and talk to my mother, tell my mother what has happened. And you know, uh, Mama Hwe, she actually walked to the, to the school, and I thought that now, you know, these teachers are going to know me now, mm. you know? I'm now with my mother here. Mm. She's just next to me here. When she arrived in the school, she asked what happened. And they explained to her. Mm. And after the explanation, she said, can you actually beat her more? Mm. You know? Mm. And then I realized, that now the teachers were the ones who were saying, no, no, no. It's OK. We have beaten her. You know, yeah. the kind of a thing. Mm. So I think we want those kind of parents again. The parents who don't dump their schools, uh, I mean, who don't dump their children in the school and never give the support. We want those parents that even if they're working, uh, knocking off late and so on, on Sunday, they can actually, when they go to church, you know, interact with the, with the, uh, the teachers who are teaching their children. I think this is a reflection of the society that is going in the wrong direction. And therefore, and I'm happy that the media is actually, you know, concerned about this. But not only should you be concerned, we also want a situation where the media could actually show some successes. Where, because in many of these schools, despite all the challenges that are there, there are schools where discipline is actually going very, 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 very well. Oh, well, let's take this opportunity, this moment, to highlight such a school. Yeah. I'm sure in the Free State there's one that comes to mind. Which school is that? The school that comes to mind now is Kopanung uh, in Bloemfontein. Uh, it's a school in the middle of uh, the gangs infested area, right? But the principal there, the teachers, the team, right? Is such a way that even the gangsters, when they want to fight, they fight very far from the school. So they, he has actually built a system where uh, the whole community around the school respects the school, you know? And therefore nobody could actually walk into the knife there and so on and so on. There's been instances where when gangsters fought, uh, and one of these gangsters ran into the yard of the school. And this other one stood up and waited for him to go out of the, of, of the school. Mm. And it shows that uh, if we work with our people, we can change and improve uh, uh, conditions of safety in our own uh, communities. Now, going back to the content that children are taught, are there yeah. areas of improvement which you think should be taking place 
in as far as the curriculum is concerned. I know you're very strong yeah. on uh, mathematics. You can tell yeah. me more why you're yeah. so passionate about it and what yeah, initiatives yeah. you have started in the Free State to promote that. But yeah. generally speaking, in broad terms, wha what do you think we can do to improve the quality of the content of, uh, of education? I think we need to implement more of what is there. You know, if you go to a school where children are given books to read and they don't read, it doesn't matter how much how the infrastructure looks like, it doesn't matter how many books they have and so on. So at the end, the teachers are still crucial. At the end, the parents are still very, very important. So I'm saying in terms of the framework of the, of the curriculum, yes, there's one area there and there where you can say we can strengthen. And that process is ongoing. It, there's always a, a review uh, by, by DBE, National Department of Basic Education. They always review the results, look at uh, where the children are getting difficulties, and so on and so on and so on. So that gets done. But I think that if you look at the free state, what we did, we just implemented what was there. We did not change the curriculum. Mm. We did not add something that was not, th that was not there. But I said to myself, when I moved into the Department of Education, I did an analysis uh, to say, uh, let's look at the subjects. You know, because I think one of the things that I benefited from, from the MBL, was strategy. I think I'm one of the best strategists, you know? And one of the things that we did then was to analyze what, which subjects are the failing subjects. And uh, lo and behold, uh, it was very clear everybody knew, knew those subjects is mathematics and science, right? And then I said, okay, now we have identified the subjects that makes learners fail. What do we do with it? We then developed a strategy that we called EMSTA. Uh, it stands for English, Mathematics, Science, Technology, and Accounting, right? Because we also picked up that there were challenges with an accounting, but also I was a little bit, uh, as you say, my also background, engineering, mm. uh, because of technical subjects, uh, accounting, when I did uh, BCom, I majored in accounting. Right? So when I speak to teachers, and they were always saying that, you know, cash flow statement is difficult. And I used to ask them, what is difficult about cash mm. flow statement? Cash in, cash out. Mm. What, wow, how, what can, how can this be difficult? And it made me, you know, identify accounting as one of those. And once we've developed that strategy, we de then developed uh, 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 what we call pr provincial strategy on learner attainment, right? And then we, ab we, we were able to set up targets now to say mathematics, we want you to achieve at this level. Uh, accounting, we want you to achieve at this level, and so on and so on. And every quarter, every quarter, me as the MEC, I lead the review of those subjects. I sit every quarter with the subject advisors and the district directors. They come and make a presentation and say, this is how far we are with mathematics. And we actually analyze what went wrong when the children were writing uh, the, the paper of mathematics. W which topic did they not uh, perform well at? And once we've identified the topic, we look at an expert, you know, who will be able to help us mm. solve that. And that is where, Brad Tim, also we introduce Technology. I know that uh, there are provinces that actually say they're better than us in terms of technology. But once people know the amount of technology that we have invested in the free state, I think that argument will change. <laughs> yeah. we, had, uh, we have a studio at the University of the Free State, just like your studio here, yeah. where we broadcast to more than 80 schools, 80 different centers. So we then would go to get a good teacher, an expert in that topic, and then they would go on studio and teach this, this topic to all the centers. And children will then have an access to a different teacher. Sure. You know? And uh, well, it's, uh, it's very, very interesting stuff that, that you are doing because I wanted to refer to, you know, other provinces that seem to be battling with the basics. You are yeah. advanced in your thinking in yeah. the free state. And once again, let me compliment you for that. Thank you. What, what do you think when you hear of pet latrines in some provinces, children dying there or infrastructure yeah. not being built on time, even yeah. though money is <laughs> allocated for that? Yeah. What, what, what do you think when you, when well, you hear well of such stories? 
Well, well, we had a, you know, a meeting with the minister and, and we discussed all these issues about uh, uh, infrastructure and especially pit latrines. And then the only conclusion we could come to was that uh, we need to prioritize better. We need to, you know, when you are uh, in government, you know, everything is a priority. It depends who makes the loudest noise, right? But as an MEC, as an HOD, you need to prioritize better. You need to be able to say, if this thing, actually, if a child falls into the pit latrine, you know, it actually erases everything good that we have absolutely, been doing. Absolutely, right? absolutely it does, yeah. So it forced us to relook at what we have been doing and prioritize more. I think there's enough money in the, in, in, in the province. There are other provinces, you know, like uh, uh, Limpopo, Eastern Cape, where uh, there is a number of these pit latrines. But in the majority of the provinces, uh, we can eliminate them, right? And when I looked at what we have done, I mean, we have built big, beautiful halls for, for our schools and so on. And in, in, in retrospect, I think that we sh I should have started with pit latrines yeah. so that we eliminate them. You know, yeah. but uh, when you work, the team, as, as Nelson Mandela said, those who don't do anything who are sitting there watching, they can they are, they've got the liberty of pointing mistakes. But those of us who are working hard, we've got the duty to correct some well, of those you're mistakes. You're mentioning Nelson Mandela now. One of his key projects when he became president was nation building and yes. reconciliation. Yes. And education offers an opportunity to bring South Africans together yes. across cultures, more importantly, across races. Yes. But that's where we have seen tensions occur. I don't know how you manage them in the free state. I think you can share ideas with us on how to bring people of different cultural, racial backgrounds together, especially in the school situation. Well, the first thing that we did, Platim, because we also did, yeah, yeah, you know, now that you ask these questions, I realize, yes, we have done so many things. Yeah, well, and I'm <laughs> going to ask you to be very, very, very short on this. Oh, all right, no, that's brief, fine. That's yeah? okay. Now, the first I interaction was uh, FETSAS, you know, this uh, school governing body that is organizing mostly in uh, ex modelsy schools. We actually called them in, had a discussion with them, and I told them that, look, we are impressed with your schools, with the, the results that you are producing. I want you to allow me to use some of your teachers to help actually improve these township schools. So as I said at the beginning, this has been a joint effort. So schools from UNICE, from Gray, and all these top uh, schools have actually yeah. helped yes. in teaching our learners in poor schools. And that, has been, that, that has been working very wonderful. Thank you very much, uh, MEC, for having been our guest, and uh, keep up the good work. Everything of the best to you. Thank you very much, Vati. That's uh, Tatema Kwe. He's the MEC for Education in the Free State. And after the break, we will be talking to legendary actor, playwright, Dr. John Kani. Don't go anywhere.